cleansing of the blood of Jesus upon each one of us, O oh Lord. Cleanse us from our sin. Cleanse us from our iniquity, Lord. Cleanse us from every vain thought that we have harbored in our hearts, O oh God. The Lord, you may allow us to come with a clean heart in your sanctuary, King of all glory. We thank you for those that are on their way, Lord, as we thank you even for us who you have enabled to gather here in this time, King of all glory. We pray that you shall have your way, Lord. For every burden that we may have carried upon us when we came into this house, Lord, we know that you are the Lord who gives us rest. For every challenge we have faced over the course of the week, for everything that is a pain in our hearts this morning, we bring it at the foot of the cross and we pray that Jesus, you shall have your way, O God, and you shall minister unto us. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. As we enter into a period of praising and worshiping you, Lord, we pray that your presence shall inhabit our praises. And we pray that our praises shall rise unto heaven and unto your throne of grace as a sweet smelling incense this morning. That glory and praise may return unto you. Father, we bless you and we honor you. And we pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. So I welcome the worship team to lead us in praises. God bless you. We thank the Lord for the far that he has taken us this year. It is This is the last day of January and we are so thankful to the Lord for the greatness that he has shown us. I will request us to stand as we praise the Lord, as we give thanks to the Lord for all that he's done to us. Let us stand up. Amen. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Thanks to the Lord for He is good. He is love and yours forever. Give thanks to the Lord for He is great. He is love and yours forever. Give thanks to the Lord for there is no other God. He is love and forever. Let's sing together. Sing aloud and declare His wonderful deeds. Shouting aloud His wonderful greatness. Oh my soul, don't forget His wonderful deeds. Oh, some glory. Sing aloud, sing aloud and declare His wonderful deeds. Shouting aloud His wonderful deeds. Oh my soul, oh my soul, don't forget His wonderful the Lord is good, is very good, is very good, is very good, the Lord is good, is very good, is very good, is good to the Lord, the Lord is good. To the Lord, for He is great. He love and yours forever. Give thanks to the Lord for all He's done. He love and yours forever. Give thanks to the Lord for He is awesome. He love and yours forever. Sing aloud and declare His wonderful deeds. Oh, 
the Lord is good. It's very good. It's very good. It's very good. The Lord is good. It's very good. It's very good. It's good. The Lord is good. It's very good. It's very good. It's very good. The Lord is good. Thank 
Before we sit down, let's invite our pastor for the moment of the word. God bless you. Bwana Yesu atukuzwe. Tunaweza kati. Look at the book of uh, Mark, chapter 15, and I look at one verse, verse 15, Mark 15, 15. Mark chapter 15, verse 15. It should be easy to remember 15, 15. Mark 15, 15. And the Bible says, So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. We bless you and honor you. And Lord, we yield our hearts and our minds to understand your word. We pray that the Holy Spirit shall commune and communicate these divine truths into our innermost being. That there be conviction and that Father, you're going to mold us in the direction of your purpose and your will. To be the people you want us to be. Therefore, we ask for spiritual hearing. We may hear what the Spirit says to the church and spiritual utterance. But Father, as I stand before your people, God, I may hear from you and speak your word. Every spirit that exalts itself against your word, we now take authority against it in the name of Jesus Christ. And plead the cover of the blood of Jesus upon the atmosphere in this church. That Father, no enemy shall reign. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. But this is the story of uh, the last days of Jesus on the earth. You will remember that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Bible tells us, everywhere he went, he was doing good. He healed the sick. Multitude of sick people were healed by Jesus Christ. He brought deliverance to people who are demon possessed. He preached the gospel to the poor. And when he found funerals, they became resurrections. And his fame had gone out throughout Galilee and Judea and people are coming from Syria and Lebanon because his reputation has gone far and wide. And people in Jerusalem welcomed him and one day he came down the Mount of Olives. The Bible tells us that people brought a donkey, they put clothes on the donkey 
he rode on that donkey and they put their clothes and the branches on the ground and they cried Hosanna but four days later he was crucified four days earlier he was praised because they knew what he had done a person who had fed multitudes miraculously and the Bible says when he came to Jerusalem that they tried to trick him and found he is so wise he's untrickable remember the case of uh, the Pharisees and the Herodians who came together and one of the two come told him master we know you're a man who fears nothing and do not respect anybody but speak the word of God in truth tell us is it right for us to pay tribute to Caesar should we pay or should we not pay and you know the Pharisees if he said pay to Caesar, he would have become a traitor. The Herodians were there. If he said don't pay, then it would have been treason, inciting the Jews not to pay tax. If he answered yes or no, he would have been trapped. They thought they have a perfect trap. But they realized he is wiser than they ever imagined. He told them, bring me a denarius. They brought him a coin and said, whose inscription is this? Whose image? And said, Caesar's. They said, then give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. So they said, this guy is so wise. He's not only powerful. He's not only a miracle worker, but he has divine wisdom. But they crucified him. And he was taken by night from Ghana to Gethsemane. They brought him for a mock trial in the house of the high priests. And the following morning, they took him to Pilate. Because from 4 BC, the Jews were not allowed to pass destiny to anybody. The power of passing destiny had been abolished by the Romans. So the Jews, Jewish Sanhedrin had no right, no authority to pass death sentence. So they were brought to Pilate. Pilate was the governor, or the Roman governor. And uh, so they asked Pilate, please, we want this man to die. So the final authority was supposed to be Pilate. And Pilate had heard about Jesus. Because his fame was known by Romans, by Greeks, by all the Jews and the tribes around, the Dumians, etc. But he listened, examined him, the accusations were brought, and he found the accusations are not valid. So Pilate finally said, I think I'll read a bit of uh, the foregoing. Pilate answered them, do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? That is Jesus, verse 9. For he knew that the chief priest had handed him over to him because of envy. In other words, he knew that Jesus was innocent. But the chief priest stirred up the, the crowd that they should rather release Barabbas to him, to them. He started the crowd. Pilate answered and said to, to them again, What then do you want me to do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? So they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said to them, Listen to this, 
what evil has he done? In other words, he knew that Jesus had done no evil. He is innocent. But they cried all the more, crucify him. And now that brings us to the verse we read in our text. So Pilate, wanting to gratify the crowd. Mark that word, that phrase, wanting to gratify the crowd. Wanting to gratify the crowd. That's the one I wanted to catch. Wanting to gratify the crowd. He released Barabbas. Barabbas was a criminal. He had committed murder. And he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him, that is, beaten him for the stripes on his bare back to be crucified. By wanting to gratify the crowd, Pilate went against his conscience and his convictions. Because he wanted to gratify the crowd. This is something that is very common among people. He knew absolutely in his mind, Jesus is innocent. But Barabbas is a criminal. He is guilty. He has murdered. It's very plain. But finally, home days he release. He releases the criminal and orders the crucifixion of somebody he proclaims is innocent. What happened? Wanting to gratify the crowd. How many times do you also fail to do what we know is right because we want to gratify the crowd? We want to do what everybody else is doing. How many times have we been driven having in our conviction and conscience by the inclination to go along with the mobs, with the people. One time, we saw a riot in the University of Nairobi, and the students were stoning cars. And one of the photographs taken, we actually realized one of the young students was actually somebody we knew. So I asked him later on, why were you going stoning cars? And he told me that everybody was doing it. I, I followed the crowd. The pressure to follow the crowd is very strong. But the blessed man or the woman is the one who stands by the truth. In spite of the circumstances, stand with the truth. Stand with what is right. Whether everybody is against it. Other the truth, today there are a lot of things that people do because others are doing them. The clothes we are wearing, we are wearing because others designed them. <laughs> and we have to because you cannot design your own clothes. But I want to warn you. We must not allow the pool of the crowd or society or friends to undermine our convictions and our conscience. Because one day we shall stand before the eternal judge and the crowd will not be there. You stand as an individual. Historically, we are told that after Pilate had crucified Jesus Christ, 
and Jesus rose from the dead. Why did he not last long? The Samaritans were infuriated by some of his policies and they went to send a delegation to Rome and they managed to convince the emperor that Pilate is a bad man. He is making the Arab Empire appear evil. And so the emperor in Rome deposed Pilate and exiled him in Rome, a city called Lyons. And he died a miserable man. And he said that actually he kept remembering that he did something against his conscience to gratify the people. And although he washed his hands, I am innocent of the blood of this person. The blood of Jesus is the innocent blood he has said would not be erased from his hands. He died a miserable man. Today there is a challenge to us to stand by the truth, to stand by our conscience. Even when the crowd is not on our side. In the book of Acts chapter 4, we find Peter and John taken before the Sanhedrin. And they have been accused, you know, that's after they had preached. To a crowd after the hearing of the creeper at the beautiful gate and multitudes believed after the hearing of the creeper and the elders of the Jews summoned the apostles they were arrested brought before them and they said now if these people continue preaching in this name Judaism is finished our religion will be finished People will go after them because see the miracles happening. And so they said, we command you never again to preach in this name. You must not teach or mention this name of Jesus. Or well, even today, there are people that don't want to get the name of Jesus mentioned. In America, during Obama's time, Obama issued an executive order to all the chaplains in America, in the military, that they must not use the name of Jesus in prayer. Just use the name of God. And so, the manner of prayer was changed in the military. The chaplains were to pray just in the name of God. Don't mention Jesus. It might happen here tomorrow. You might go to a fashion where the name of Jesus is not wanted. Now the disciples answered this way. In chapter 4 verse 19, Peter and John answered them. Judge you whether it is right for us to obey men rather than God. What did they say? We are answerable to God. In chapter 5, verse 29, they had been again arrested for preaching. They were brought before the Sanhedrin. And again, they were told, Did we not command you that you not preach in this or teach in this name? And they said, We must obey God rather than men. That was the words of Peter. And that verse had been articulated as the Peter principle. We must obey God rather than men. I've heard this song being sung here in the church and other places. Who has the final say? Bona Sefire. Who has the final say? And I have many people just say, Jesus, no, Jehovah has a final say. But the question is this, 
Maybe you are talking about who has the final say in the universe. Well, Jehovah has the final say. But what about in your own life? Who has the final say? Peter and John proclaim God has the final say. We must obey God rather than men. How many times have you obeyed expediency or circumstances? I've seen Christians who bribe when they are caught in situations where the police want to take them in. Particular traffic cases. A lot of Christians bribe. So in that situation, who has the final say? Is this you, Jehovah? If Jehovah doesn't want you to bribe, and you bribe, is this you, the one with the final say? And you know, sometimes somebody said that uh, the greatest lies in the world are told in church, and they are usually sung. Because I can imagine people seeing Jehovah have the final say, but He doesn't have the final say in their lives. That means what they are singing is they are telling lies. You can't see Jehovah the final say, and then tomorrow you're committing sin. You can't say that, that Jehovah the final say, and then tomorrow when you are cornered, you succumb to do what is evil. You can't say Jehovah the final say, and when things are difficult, you take shortcuts. Pilate went against his conscience and convictions to please the crowd. How many times have we done things because of us are doing it? When I was in college, I was approached by some brethren. But when I was leaving, he said, Do you have a special friend? I said, Well, yes, I have. All of you are special to me. And I was like, I mean, is somebody very special? I said, yes, you're one of them. You're very special. And finally, the father says, mean, I mean, do you have a girlfriend? He said, I don't, I don't have one. But all the girls here are my friends. He says, I mean, one who is so close to you. I said, I told him, I'm, I'm not ready for marriage yet. <laughs> The point is, because every student has a girlfriend, they expect him to have a girlfriend. And I have known people, young people who have actually been very busy looking for boyfriends and girlfriends because everybody else has a girlfriend, a boyfriend. I'm the only one without a boyfriend or a girlfriend. In other words, you are acting because of the pool of the crowd. I want to challenge you today, brethren, if you are born again, that you must act on the basis of what does heaven want. Not what the world desires. I know people who have committed fornication because everybody around me is also doing it. We must be a people who are heaven driven, not crowd driven. And today I want to ask you, are you heaven driven or crowd driven? The crowd could be your, your own family. There are people who will not get saved because my family is Catholic. They will not accept it. When we are convinced something is right, we must do it whether people like it or not. We must, like Peter say, we want to please God, not men. A lot of people go to hell, not because of our bad people, but because in their quest to please their fellow men, they failed God. And young people particularly, this is a very subtle trap. You want to do things because others are doing it. You want to conform 
You want to wear what they are wearing. Did you know that some people who are wearing clothes, they know they are bad? But that's the fashion. I've seen particular girls wearing clothes in the streets, so tight and so short, that when they are walking, they keep pulling them down. Have you seen them? They are pulling them down because they realize <laughs> they keep coming up. They are not actually exactly right. But it's a fashion, and you want to be fashionable. You want to please the crowd. We need to beware. Because you cannot please the crowd and please God. You cannot walk with the world and walk with God. John, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15, the Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For the things that are in the world, the last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life, they are not of the Father, but of the world. And the world, and the thing shall pass away. But what belongs to God will endure for forever. Why are we so influenced by the temporary? Why is it that we are influenced by people who are going to die and if you feel God who is eternal? We need to make up our minds that we shall stand with God even when it is not convenient. Peter and John stood with God and they were beaten. The apostles stood with God and they were crucified. Some were sown in two. But they strongly said, we would rather obey men rather than obey God rather than men. That's a choice you have to make. Pirate made a poor choice, wanting to gratify the crowd. Do you also do things to gratify the crowd? To appear fashionable by others? Do you also do things that you know others will approve, even when God may not approve? This is a challenge among us Christians. Because we are called to stand out. We are going to be special. The Bible says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. But some Christians don't want to become peculiar. You want to be like anybody else. You want to gratify the crowd. Let me tell you something. One day, you will stand before the judgments of Christ. And the fashions will no longer matter. What <laughs> the opinions of your friends will no longer matter. Being accepted by the crowd <laughs> will no longer feature. And when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, some of you regret that I followed the crowd, I lost the way. But some of you who will see, I'm grand, I refuse to follow the crowd. I stood for Christ, I stood for God, I walked in righteousness, and today I have eternal joy. May God help us that we shall live this life not like Pilate, to gratify the crowd, but like Peter and John, to obey God rather than men. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, that this message may be engraved in the hearts of your people, Lord. <laughs> that as we walk in this earth, the pilgrimage, oh God, the few days, the few years we have, oh Lord, on this earth, we shall walk with Christ. We shall walk in the Spirit. We shall walk as Jesus walked. And that Father, 
We shall not fear the cloud. We shall not conform to the pattern of this world. But we shall be transformed by the renewing of our minds. That we may do what is acceptable before you, O God Almighty. So help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's put our hands in prayer. I want you to consider your life. I want you to ask yourself, would God approve of the way you have been living? Is there something in your life that God will not approve of? If there is, just tell God, forgive me and cleanse me. Just make a commitment, Lord. I will no longer be influenced by the crowd. I want to walk. In your will. In your way. According to your word. So help me, God. Make that commitment and you will never regret. Thank you, Lord. Maybe you're here, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. Perhaps you fear what your neighbor, your friend will say. And those are some people who have failed to give their life to Christ because their boyfriend might leave him. The girlfriend might leave. <laughs> the boyfriend might leave her. The girlfriend may leave him. But let God matter in your life. Let the truth come fast in your life. Let eternal values come fast in your life. Whatever decision you make, you make that decision on the basis of what God wants. What God's will is. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that these people have heard this word today, Lord. That you shall be at work by the Holy Spirit in their hearts. That nobody, none of them, shall miss eternity. But Father, they shall walk a walk that will bring you glory and honor. They shall receive your blessing, Lord. And their future shall be guaranteed. Because they are not man priests. They are not crowd priests. But are people who are obedient to your, call, to your will. So help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like us to close with us of grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.